Welcome to The Shadows folks, today we will be discussing Heavy Pistols. Heavy Pistols are your mainstay weapon if you're a pistol user with excellent firepower for their size. Heavy Pistols have no concealability, making them relatively easy to conceal, but risking detection from observant foes. They use the pistol skill with the semi-automatic and revolver specialisations, depending on the pistol in question, and they use the heavy pistol range table. Base damage is 5 physical with neg 1 armor penetration as standard. This is the first category that can reliably penetrate most armor you'll find on the street, with the armor jacket being the first thing that has a chance against them, however slim. Like light pistols, they cannot mount gas vent systems which is a pity, because some of the best guns in the class have burst fire. Now, let's get into the specifics. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the Ares Predator line. This includes models 1 through 4, along with the Cold Web variant. The Ares Predator 4 is the baseline heavy pistol against which all others must compete, coming in at a very cheap 350 Nguyen, and coming stock with a smart gun system and a 15 round semi-auto capacity. The earlier models are a step back, costing more and providing less advanced smart gun systems that may need specialised equipment to use, but the holes they put in people are just as big, so if you're playing a veteran runner still using vintage gear, they're a great way to display that. The cold weather variant is significantly more expensive but comes with the electronic firing upgrade as a native modifier, meaning it's functionally got two extra upgrade slots if you were going to get that anyway. The bottom line is that while an Ares Predator 2 is a bit basic, it is the iconic heavy pistol for a reason, and no runner is going to look down on you for packing one. For our next gun, we are staying on the Ares train, and we are talking about another great gun. This is the Ares Viper Sliver Gun, arguably the best heavy pistol for general combat. The Sliver Gun is restricted to flechette ammunition, which cuts into its flexibility and gives it poor penetration, but even that is deceptive, so let's look at it. For 500 New Yen, you're getting a gun with 8 physical damage, 3 points higher than normal for a heavy pistol, and an AP of plus 5, 6 points higher than a heavy pistol. On average, this means that a shot from a Viper Sliver Gun will do one more damage than a generic heavy pistol against a target in body armour. However, the Sliver Gun is capable of burst fire, meaning that it can easily deal three points more damage per shot than a generic heavy pistol. That doesn't eat into your ammunition, but with a 30 round capacity, you have ammo to spare. The sliver gun fares less well against hard targets like drones and vehicles, and it is advisable to carry an alternate weapon to deal with such threats. But against living creatures, the sliver gun provides a staggering amount of firepower and staying power. Oh, and it comes with a built-in sound suppressor, because silent and deadly is an excellent combination. The Beretta 97. At more than twice the price of an Ares Predator, this gun has a lot to prove and lacking the standard heavy pistol penetration is a poor start. Its 15 round ammunition capacity is identical to the Predator, and it lacks a stock smart link option. So what are you paying for? Simple. The B97 can burst fire, an option that gives it excellent firepower and flexibility. The loss of one point of penetration isn't great, but in the grand scheme of things, it's negligible particularly when you consider the damage bump burst fire gives access to. The lack of ability to get a gas vent does hinder the gun's ability to be used to full effectiveness, but with a cyber arm gyro mount or just a very strong character, you can find ways to get the most out of it. The Browning Mega Power. Browning's attempt to muscle in on the Predator is pretty solid. It costs noticeably more, but not enough to break the bank and it has identical stats to the Predator 4. Uh, features wise you're looking at a smart gun, safe target system and an advanced safety. 
these are great features for a sidearm or a gun you intend to keep stashed which someone else might find. It's also a great bait gun if you're looking to trick someone to, into stealing your firearm to make them think they have the upper hand in a situation. However, these features aren't something that most runners go out of their way to get their hands on, so you might prefer to just grab the Predator and spend the difference on features you might actually use. Oh, and uh, don't forget to have your hacker check the Smart Lynx wind speed monitoring software. There's a tracker built into that that saves the GPS location every time you fire around. So you probably want a feature like that removed before your gun gives the police a full list of every crime you've committed with it. The Browning Ultra Power. More direct competition to the Predator. Coming in a slightly cheaper, the Ultra Power is underwhelming. It has two thirds of the Predator's ammunition capacity and only packs a laser sight compared to a smart gun system. And all in all, it feels like a downgrade when compared to the Predator. The limited production runs with chrome and ivory are certainly worth picking up if you want a display weapon, but on the streets it is hard to think of a reason I would take one over the Predator. The Cavalier Arms Sheriff. This is an anti-material rifle, pure and simple. Single action and a five round cylinder hurts it. And the high powered ammunition it uses is expensive, hard to come by, does not come in specialist variants and has a neg 2 penalty to hit that you cannot get rid of. However, the 8 physical damage and neg 4 penetration means that this gun is going to ruin the day of anything short of a light tank if it lands that hit. It comes standard with a smart gun system, is sturdy enough to use as a club when it runs out of ammunition and is fired from your pan rather than using a trigger, meaning that even if someone manages to take it from you, they cannot turn it against you. This does leave it abnormally vulnerable to hackers, so I would recommend getting a skin link for it as soon as possible. While you can buy a sheriff during character creation, the high powered rounds it uses are availability 20F, meaning that you need the restricted gear advantage in order to start with them. Personally, I consider this a novelty weapon. Great for show, but too impractical to make a real mainstay of your arsenal. The Cavalier Deputy. A semi-automatic 7-cylinder revolver with standard heavy pistol stats. This comes stock with no electronics and cannot mount a standard silencer. It's very cheap and like all revolvers it is physically impossible for it to jam though it can have other mechanical failures. But the only reason I can see for using a gun that has less ammunition and is more awkward to load than the Predator and does not come stock with any upgrades at all is that you like revolvers, which is a perfectly good reason to use one I suppose, though you might want to wait until I finish the list before purchasing this specific revolver. The Collapsible Heavy Pistol. Expensive, hard to get, and the combat stats are underwhelming, though not terrible. This gun has the rare novelty of being completely without a description in the book it appears in. Technically, this means that it does not have any features at all and is rendered terrible for it. I've not been able to find official errata. My advice to GMs and players alike is to ignore this anomaly in favour of the PKS-3 collapsible pistol found in the same book rather than house ruling this one. The Colt Future Frontier, another revolver, this one designed to look like it's straight out of the Wild West. Seven round cylinder means that like all revolvers it's hurting for ammunition in a fight with multiple initiative passes and this one is single action compared to the Cavalier Deputy but it packs a bit more than the average punch for a heavy pistol. The stock melee hardening makes this a viable choice for tight quarters, though the low rate of fire really hurts its offensive capacity. A niche weapon, though if you're ambidextrous and dual wield them, you might compensate for both ammunition and rate of fire issues while still getting above average damage per shot. 
The Cult Government 2066. Almost exactly the same stats as a Predator, with a 14 round capacity instead of 15, and a slightly higher price tag. The government trades out the internal smart gun for stock electric firing, and that's a pretty good trade. Reliable, controllable, and a bit quieter than most guns when fitted with the silencer. This is another good generic heavy pistol. If you need a disposable, then the electric firing system gives it a built-in point of recoil compensation. Plenty for a semi-auto gun, and you can attach an external smart gun and remove it after the job. Arguably, this makes it a better drop pistol than some cheaper options, since the smart gun system is where any incriminating data might survive anyway. The Colt M1991. This is a display piece and should not be used as a weapon except in emergencies. Vintage and with an incredibly small ammunition capacity, this pistol is not up to the standard for modern combat. The Colt Manhunter. It's the Browning Ultra Power, but with 60% more ammunition capacity. Same cost, same availability, same laser sight. If you're looking at the Browning Ultra Power and thought, that might be worth looking at, get this instead. It's flat out better. The CZ-64. Competition for the Colt Manhunter. This gun trades two rounds from its clip and an extra 50 new yen in order to get a point of innate recoil compensation. This is actually a pretty good trade, as it means you don't have to put any mod slots into a personalised grip, freeing you up to have your custom sidearm have some other modifications. Either is a good choice if you want a laser sight instead of a smart gun, so assess your needs and choose the one that works for you. Do not choose the Browning Ultra Power. It's not bringing anything to the table in this discussion. The Echirio Hatamoto 2. This pistol sized one shot shotgun packs a hell of a punch, but is made completely redundant by the smaller Crime Stopper light pistol, which does the same massive damage, but packs a second shot in case the first one isn't enough and is also more concealable. Sadly, this bad boy is now not even worth considering. The HK MK31. This is a strange beast, with a standard heavy pistol stat line, and coming with a sound suppressor, laser sight, and a vintage smart gun system that requires fiber optic wire and specialized backward compatibility software to use, effectively needing an emulator. It's overpriced and a museum piece, but, as with the older Predator models, if your character is a veteran of the shadows, he might still carry one of these. The HK Urban Fighter. This is not a gunfight weapon, despite the name. It has below average ammunition capacity at 10, can only mount a single custom accessory, which is a silencer, and cannot be modified, though it does come with a built-in smart gun system. The selling point for this gun is that it cannot be detected by magnetic anomaly detectors, and its specialised ammunition magazines are sealed to prevent olfactory scanners. Its only accessory is the aforementioned non-metallic silencer. This is a gun designed to be brought into places where people do not want you to have guns. It's not made for sustained firefights, but within its intended role, it is very nearly unmatched. The Islam HP-49B. A heavy pistol with a 12 round capacity and a built in flashlight. This gun has no integrated aiming electronics while costing the same 300 new yen as the Colt Manhunter. You're likely to find this in the hands of security guards and organisations taking advantage of the government bulk purchase discounts, but as a runner you are unlikely to use this unless infiltrating such an organisation. The ISOM PHP-131 ISOM once again deliv under delivers on the ammunition side with a measly 9 shots but with mad resistant construction and an integrated laser sight, 
This is something a runner might find useful when infiltrating a facility with basic security systems. Its forbidden availability means it's not suitable for a self-defense weapon for daily carry life, uh, where its relatively lightweight and simple electronics would otherwise have made it worthwhile. I probably wouldn't pick this one up, but unlike the HP 49B, I can see reasons for a runner to have one in their collection. The Morrissey Alter. If I had to sum up this pistol in a word, it would be overpriced. It comes in at almost three times the cost of a Colt Manhunter, has four less shots, and is otherwise identical in function. All that said, it is a very stylish pistol, so it's a good choice in situations where that might matter. A decent gun for a face, going somewhere fancy, but I'd avoid it if you're looking for pure cost effectiveness. Morrissey Elite. Okay, this one comes in with a five round capacity, which is dreadful, and it only uses light pistol ranges. However, it has a few advantages that make it worth considering. Firstly, it does come with a laser sight, which is better than nothing. Secondly, like the Alter before, it's fancy and stylish, something your face can bring along to the right kind of social gathering. And this is where its main selling point comes in. It's got a concealability of negative one instead of zero. If your priorities are on something that packs a punch and is easily concealed from spot checks, this might be the gun for you, though there are others that you should consider. Now, However, avoiding prolonged firefights with this gun is essential, as five rounds does not go very far at all. The Nemesis Arms Praetorian. This one is an odd beast. It's only got 12 shots, but that's about the only major drawback here, as it's an ornate yet functional smart gun with melee hardening and a bayonet. If you find yourself out of ammunition, it is extremely serviceable as a melee weapon, and the design includes a point of innate recoil compensation. It's got a reasonable price tag too, so if you're looking for an all-in-one backup weapon, this will do the job. The Nutama Nemax. Do you like the Browning Mega Power, but find yourself thinking, gee, I wish this had less ammunition capacity, cost three times as much, and was harder to get my hands on? Well, I have good news for you! This is the Mega Power with two-thirds the shots, availability so high you can't get attack character generation, and a stupidly high price tag. Don't get this gun, it's really not worth it. And don't try and use one if you pick one up on a run, biometric safety means you'll be locked out. The Onatari arms steadfast. Teeny ammunition capacity, no built-in targeting electronics. The best I can say about it is that it's sturdy. For the same price, get a Predator 4. Help, for the same price, get a Browning Ultra Power. Yeah, the Steadfast is bad enough that you're going to be better off getting a gun I have repeatedly said not to get. It is that bad. The Onatari Arms Violator. It's a reskin of the Browning Mega Power, but with less ammunition and a teeny price difference. Again, just get the Browning, unless the extra 50 new yen will break the bank, but you desperately need these specific electronics. The PSK Collapsible Pistol. As is par for the course, this pistol trades concealability for combat effectiveness. This one can only mount a special silencer and no other accessories and with the press of a button collapses into a block of solid metal. This makes it considerably smaller and almost impossible to recognize as a firearm and thus easy to slip by all but the most knowledgeable and attentive security guards. It cannot be loaded in this form 
so you will need to find an alternative method of smuggling in bullets. This gun is hard to get and very expensive, but if you want to sneak a gun into somewhere you shouldn't have one, it is hard to find a better option. The Remington Room Sweeper. Cheap and effective, this shotgun pistol can use a choke to control shot rounds and can fire shotgun only ammunition like flare and shot clock rounds. Definitely worth looking at if you want to play with shotgun toys but lack the long arms skill. It has no stock electronics and uses an internal magazine making it slow to load. The Ruger Bloodhawk. Another revolver, so in brief, six shots, single action, laser sight, metahuman customization. I don't see a reason to ever buy this gun compared to the other revolvers on this list, especially considering what is up next. The Ruger Super Warhawk. If you insist on using a revolver, use this one. With 6 damage and neg 2 AP out of the box, this puts big holes in whatever you point it at. I know runners who load up AV rounds and carry this to deal with any heavy drones or vehicles they run into. Normal revolver drawback of 6 shots, single action and no silencer, but this is your ace in the hole against hard targets. It's super cheap too, making it very cost effective even if you kit it out with mods. It's cheap to upgrade to semi-automatic and it pays back very quickly. This is your sidearm if you want stopping power. The Ruger Thunderbolt. The other sidearm for stopping power. Well, this pistol only fires in narrow bursts, meaning that its 12 round capacity is actually only good for 4 shots. It's pricey too. But it has two points of innate recoil compensation built in, which is darn near priceless. You can get it with a built in laser sight or smart gun for a small cost, which is good because that way they don't take up any mod slots. This gun is a favourite of Lone Star and they feel that it's their private property, so be aware that if they see you carrying one, you will be harassed. While the low number of shots is an issue, at least it's a clip loader rather than a cylinder, so with a smart gun, your regular reloads will not cost you too much time. The Savalette Guardian. Halfway between a Predator and a Thunderbolt, this gun comes with one point of innate recoil compensation, a built-in smart gun system, and the ability to fire a short burst as a complex action. This obviously isn't as good as normal burst fire, but it's a nice option to have if you find yourself against a heavy target or a couple of points of extra damage against one damage resistance roll is better than two weaker attacks that both get damage resistance rolls. If the price isn't a major issue for you and you don't have a way to compensate for the heavy recoil of the Thunderbolt, then the Guardian is an excellent choice of weapon to use as a baseline. Don't forget that since it is technically burst fire capable, it can be easily modded to fire full auto if you want to get rid of all your bullets as fast as possible. The Shia Wazi Arms Copernicus. Another gun with the Browning Mega Power Electronics Array, marginally less ammunition and a higher price tag. Not a bad gun, but the Browning does the same thing for less money. Again, the Shiawase Arms Heavy Tactical. Clocking in at 3 grand and availability 17, this is not a common gun. It uses high powered ammunition, making it hit like a ton of bricks, but also resulting in inherent inaccuracy. It also has a lot of upgrades. I mean a lot. It comes stock with <gasps> advanced safety, high powered chambering, powered slide mount, reduced weight, safe target system, smart gun, and a thermal suppressor. This is a late game weapon, but if you get your hands on one 
and have a source for the ammunition, it's an excellent choice of firearm. Though rumour has it that the company may have fudged the reliability tests a bit. There's something to keep in mind, you know? The Walther P109, a vintage heavy pistol with one point of recoil compensation in 8 and 12 round capacity. This is not a terrible gun by any stretch. Were it not for its compatibility issues with modern targeting electronics, I would suggest that its innate recoil compensation would be a significant boon. But as is, I would avoid relying on this gun on the streets if other options are available. The Walther Secura. Basic model is a baseline heavy pistol with no features and a 12 round capacity. Smart link version come with with a smart gun system but costs 100 new yen more than a predator while still having three shots less not a terrible gun but it is overshadowed by the competition the compact version trades another three shots for a total of nine rounds between reloads and uses light pistol ranges but it has a concealability of neg one Think of it as the Morris Elite, but can get an integrated smart link and has twice the ammunition capacity. If you have to pick between the two, the Compact is the better choice in almost every circumstance. The WW Infiltrator. Rare and expensive. This otherwise generic heavy pistol is made of polyresin, immune to mad scanners and breaks down into parts resembling toiletries in your travel bag. This is another one of those guns to, designed to get past security, but it's actually decent in combat on the other side. So, time for the best and worst in class. Best in class is the Ares Predator. New Yen for New Yen, it's hard to pick a better cost balance of cost, combat capacity, and features. There is a reason that the Predator was the gun everyone was trying to measure up to. Honourable mentions go to the Ares Viper Sliver Gun, which I couldn't give the title to because of its limited ammunition options. The Praetorian also made the cut, uh, but I didn't like the ammunition drop. It's a gun. Trading range capacity for melee utility isn't a very good trade for a gun. Worst in class has got to be the Steadfoot asked. It brings almost nothing to the table and doesn't have the excuse of being an antique. It's outperformed by cheaper guns consistently and when compared to the identically priced Ares Predator, there is no competition. Dishonourable mentions go to the Nitama Nemax and the Ruger Bloodhawk, both of which do what another gun does, but worse and for more money. Disqualified from consideration is the collapsible heavy pistol due to the lack of information about it preventing a reasonable verdict. Next time we talk machine pistols, because single-handed full auto cannot possibly go wrong. Don't forget to like and subscribe, maybe even check out the Patreon.